<sighs> Here we are, you guys. Sunday. The last stretch. A couple days from now, maybe even uh, later today or tomorrow, you're gonna have the post-con blues, I call them. <laughs> you already got it? Hold on, guys, hold on just a little while longer. You can do it, it's not over yet. It's not over yet, the sun's still up. I think. <laughs> a little dark in here. How you guys doing? <laughs> last night was your last chance to party very hard. Did you do it? Yeah. Me too, me too. Very surprised I'm not hungover. I had four drinks, I'm a lightweight. Cheap date, not a lie. Let's get straight to it. Does anybody have any questions? Because let me tell you, if anybody wants to know anything about Alan Tudyk, I'm the guy to ask. <laughs> right here in the glasses. Yes, please. Uh, well, sorry, there's glasses behind you. Sorry, the right, yeah, yeah, with the hand up. There we go. Someone give her a microphone. We're gonna get to you next. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Um, I'm Canadian as well, so welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so I didn't really have a question more like um, a You don't request. have a question. A request. Oh, you, let, let, let's yeah. hear it. First of all, I just want to thank you so much. I don't know if you realize how much you raise for OpSmile and how much you give to us. We love that you come here all the time. Man, look, I, guess I know. You I, guess I don't have enough money for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I have two Firefly prints. Yep. I bought two days ago. Yes. And I want to know if I gave you 60, if you would sign one for me, and if I can give you the other one to auction. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> you want to say, want to give, hand those over to the volunteers sure. on the side. We'll have that taken care of. And I just, my sister, it's her first year here. And Happy, she adores welcome. you. And you did a shout out to her last year, so thank you very much. You betcha. Nice to see you again. Is there anyone with a question? <laughs> with the orange bird. Right here. Hi. Just wanted to know a little bit more about Con Man that you have coming up. I know that you've done some Con Man panels and stuff, but how did you guys initially come up with it, or how did you get involved to get it up and running? Alan was talking about this thing for years. Uh, he, he, someone should really write something, you know? Because if we did a thing, and he describes, essentially, Con Man, and he would do it all the time, and when we would go to a convention, he would say, you know what that, that thing that happened to us that was so funny? That would be a great idea for con man if instead of what that happened, if it was this. Uh, essentially, it's always a uh, Ray Nearly, uh, Alan's character, is, is a guy who is kind of considers himself doomed to the convention circuit where he doesn't realize how good he's got it. He takes, he takes for granted what he has in this amazing community. And every time he does it, he gets kicked in the nuts. Um, <laughs> So whereas we're having these wildly wonderful positive experiences, he'll take the, a kind of a kernel of truth from that and, and, and twist it up so that Ray nearly has to uh, learn a lesson from it because uh, he just doesn't, he doesn't get it. And we all know there's some people out there who don't get what we're doing here today, um, <laughs> which is great. I always get sappy on the last day of Comic-Con. Do you guys get that? Yeah. I know, right? I'm gonna try not to cry. Okay, so here's what I got. Guys, seriously. I saw these on um, Amazon and I had to get them. Zombie apocalypse slippers. <laughs> Straight out from the governor's bedside. I signed their foreheads and I'm gonna throw in with that. I'm gonna throw in, I don't know what this is. It's a Christmas ornament of some kind. Sometimes people give me stuff and go, here, I want you to have this. Thanks. This is an assigned CD, Owen Danoff. His parents wrote um, Afternoon Delight. <laughs> Not a word of a lie. And uh, he's a friend of mine. And he asked me if I would help him out uh, with this uh, fundraising thing. And I actually, I'm a, actually a producer on the Kickstarter. I, uh, I donated enough money to become a producer on my own CD. <laughs> I'm gonna throw that in. There's a ton, a ton of con man tattoos in here. And A piece of fan art I signed it, I swear by my pretty full blonde, I will end you $5. Who's got $5 for Operation Smile for this? Five? Who's got 10? Let me hear it. How much more? 25? 50? 60? 75 dollars. I'm gonna throw in a jar of Vegemite. 
You guys, I wrote on here, do not eat. That's not because, that's not because it's poison. It's because don't eat this, man. Yeah, right. We got some Australians. Australians always say, no, no, it's really good. You've been lied to all your lives. I'm gonna throw in, we're at 75. I'm gonna throw in this t-shirt that says, I'm Castle, Captain Hammer, and Mal Reynolds. Cool, huh? A little weirder when you wear it instead of me. I'm at 75. $100. How much? 120. 140. Nice work. 150. 160. 180. Say that again. 180. 180. Two. <laughs> and she's giving me gifts. She's buying me. $250, here's what else I'm gonna throw in. <laughs> oh my God, how can I? Con man magnets. Always be yourself, or better be Batman, unless you can be Nathan Fillion. <laughs> then always be Nathan Fillion. <laughs> There's some other, like a little scuba magnet guy. What's this? Oh, this is a, uh, a leather uh, cup holder from Pixar, uh, Pixar, Pixar, Pixar. Like a coffee, thing, a coffee mug holder, it's leather, it's actually gorgeous. They gave me like a whole stuff. And some of my sides from Castle. It's not here, which means the limo driver found it, or I don't want, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> We're at 250. 300. 300, I'm gonna throw in Proud Canadian. 350, I have 350. $400 in the back right here. 400 going once, 400, 500. 500 going once, 500 going twice, and sold. I'll take that doll. Another question. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Keeping this. <laughs> Another question. At the back, waving the Boba Fett. Good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Pretty good. Nice to see you, Nathan. I got a question. If there's a, another season or a movie, would you be go willing to go back to Green, Greendale College, a.k.a. Community? <laughs> I was like... Greendale. <laughs> um, uh, Joe McHale, really nice guy, super tall. Uh, every once in a while, he'll call me up and say, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Would you come on and do a, like, a little thing on community? Yeah, I'd love to. When? Like today? <laughs> uh, wh when do you need me there? Like 20 minutes. I can do that. I can do that. I can get, I can, I don't work till two o'clock. Can you get me out by two o'clock? Yeah, we can get you out by one o'clock. Great, I'll do it. And that's how I get on community. <laughs> Sometimes he'll be like really cool about it and call me the day before. Um, so absolutely. And will it be last minute? Absolutely. Here's another thing I got for you guys. I have in this bag, oh my God, a crap ton of con man tattoos that you can share with your friends. Or, you know, eBay. A Pixar um, journal. I hope you have tidy writing, because maybe it's a sketchbook, because there's no lines. I need, I need lines. I have in here some fan art I signed, Firefly fan art. Who's got $5? How much? $25. $25. $100. I want to throw in. <laughs> I love the Chive. Keep calm, Chive on. If you don't know this website, it's uh, a collection of hilarious videos and photos from all over the internet. And uh, they also kind of perpetuate goodwill towards your fellow man. We have how much, 25? Wow, thank you. $100. You know what else I want to throw in? It's a picture of me, Elizabeth Henstridge, and uh, Adam Baldwin we took in uh, Australia. 
I signed that. How much? 300. It's because of Adam, right? $300. I'm gonna throw in. I wrote on the label, do not eat. Really, guys, do not eat it. People, I, people said, do you like chocolate? I said, yeah, you could dip a cat turd in chocolate and I'll eat it. Someone gave me, here's some Vegemite chocolate. I said, ah. Uh. <laughs> well, you had a cat turd? <laughs> We're at 300. 300, going once. You know what I'm gonna throw in? Oh, when Adam was next to me, uh, signing autographs in Australia, I wrote on one of his headshots, a face really no one could love, Adam B. <laughs> and then he wrote on mine, constipated face? <laughs> and I told him that in confidence. <laughs> I have 300, I have 300, $400 right here. $400, you know what else I want to throw in? I was on Venture Brothers, playing a character called the Brown Widow, kind of a parody of Spider-Man. I'm gonna throw that in. I'm also gonna throw in two issues of uh, Serenity uh, Leaves on the Wind, signed. Right now, that goes sweet. It's going right now for $400 right here in the front row. 400 going once, going twice, it's yours. I'm gonna give you the rest of this bag. You know what else is in here? Guys, you missed out. Leggings. <laughs> yeah, I wanna see you wearing these. All right. There's a ton of stuff in here. Next question, who's got another one? You, sir, in the red. Great American hero. Hey, yeah. Hi, Nathan. Uh, Hi. Big fan from like Joy Buchanan on up to Richard Castle. God bless you. 1994. You're going way back. Way back. <laughs> Feeling old. Um, I was wondering, uh, you mentioned a couple times before that uh, you wouldn't mind maybe rebooting Greatest American Hero. And I've said that. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, who, who do you picture as Bill Maxwell? <sighs> Good question. Who do I picture as Bill Maxwell? You know what would be really cool is if we could get like William Cat to come back. It, right? Wouldn't that be great? Or Clark Gregg. Ooh, Clark Gregg. Jeez, kids, you're killing me. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. That's, how, that's how Bill Maxwell always talked, and I always thought it was cool. And then I met the gentleman who played him. We were in a junkyard filming Castle. It was an episode where a guy had a plastic bag over his face. It was ugly. And he came to visit. He was a really nice man before he passed away. God rest his soul. He was a really wonderful man. And that's how he is in real life. That was not a character choice. He was like, oh, I love it out of but geez, it's so hot, it's killing me. <laughs> Excellent question. I have something that I'd like you guys to have. I have one of these, uh, pop, what? Pop-tarts. Pop tarts? Pop figures. Pop television. It's a little Mal Reynolds. I signed it. You know what else I'm gonna throw in here, you guys? I have a Serenity poster. It's uh, signed by me. And over on the side, I see Joss Whedon. I see Alan Tudyk there, and I think Adam Baldwin's at the bottom. He is, he's at the bottom. <laughs> no particular reason. That's, uh, I think that's a valuable piece of merchandise. Who's gonna give me five bucks for that? How much? $100. $250. $300. $400. Five hundred dollars You know what I'm gonna throw in? I just got my hands on this little baby. <laughs> this is a nice little Firefly package. They can't keep these on the shelves. Just lots of Janes and washes. <laughs> uh, we're at $500? 550. $600? 650. 
Seven hundred dollars. Seven fifty. You guys, just so you know, that's three surgeries for children with cleft palates right there. That's a wonderful thing you're doing. I got seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's pretty sweet. I'm, I'm gonna let it go. Seven hundred and fifty going once. Eight hundred. Wow, that was close. I almost let it go. Eight hundred dollars. Going once, going twice, and it's gone. Eight hundred bucks. Another question? Right here in the front. I love your hair. Here he comes. He's sneaking up right behind you. I was uh, lucky enough to see Josh Whedon. Sorry, Joss. Right, I do it too. <laughs> and um, he said that he was free and available to do Dr. Horrible Sing Along Vlog 2. Would you, would you be willing or participating in that if that started happening? Come on, guys. Come on. Josh is going to call me up and say, hey, you want to do Dr. Horrible 2? And I'm going to go, eh. <laughs> yes, I would do that. I would do that. I would do that. Um, there's no question that we all had a fantastic time doing it. Uh, we were trying to make a point that we could create something without producers getting in the way. That was all born of the writer's strike. And um, just a wonderful opportunity to see those, all those brothers and Marissa all work together as a family, creating that amazing thing. Everybody just pitching in and just, let's do this. Let's have a great time. I remember there's a... Um, there's a point in time in which uh, Neil Patrick Harris is singing and he's, and he's walking and it's dark and we, we lost the light. We didn't have, we, we ran late. We didn't rent the lights because we didn't think we'd be at nighttime. We need light. A guy picks up his flashlight, shines it on Neil's face and we go, action, and start, and that's the scene. It's just a flashlight on his face. To me, that just says, that's what Dr. Horrible is all about. A bunch of friends pulling together, making something really great. Thank you for that. And yes, yes, I'd be in it. Why, are you hearing they're gonna recast? <laughs> Clark Gregg's been after that. I have, right here I have some fan art that I thought was actually pretty good. In the back of this, I have a, I have a picture of Allison Haslip and I, another piece of fan art, and, oh, and this is a picture, <laughs> this is a picture of me and um, Liam McIntyre, plays Spartacus. He's trying to kiss me. <laughs> Isn't that, that's beautiful. I'm gonna throw that in. Who's got five dollars for this? Five, five. How about, they got five in the back. Twenty-five dollars. One hundred dollars. You know what I'm gonna throw in? I got one of these little pop figures. It's Malcolm Reynolds, it's signed by me, right across the window. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred. Two fifty. You know what else I'm gonna throw in, you guys? Oh, this is a fan art. Oh my God. I have one of these at home on black. Someone stitched Serenity onto this beautiful card. It's actually quite nice. I'm at 250 now. You know what else I'm gonna throw in? A crap ton of con man tattoos. This is from the Perth Brown Coats. Nice little t-shirt there. Nice little collector's item. And also gonna throw in, um, you know what else I'm gonna throw in? Another t-shirt. Because I'm a proud Canadian. Everybody recognizes this. Texas. Uh, right now, how much are we at right now? We're at $250? $300 going once. How much? $350. $400 going once. $425. $450. Wow, man, that's like, that's like two more surgeries. $475 going once, going twice. $500. <laughs> You know what I'm gonna throw in? <laughs> what do I got here? More fan art. Actually, this one's pretty cool. Makes it look kind of grungy. Signed by me. 
I have $500 now, 500. What else is in this bag? $500. Oh, oh. A Buffy comic, signed by me. You'll notice on this cover, Xander's eye is already popped out. <laughs> it's all fun and games until Xander loses an eye. That's what we say around my house. <laughs> I'm also gonna throw in a t-shirt I got from uh, Destiny. A little video game I did a voice for, Kate Six. That's my Destiny shirt. Right now, $500 I'm gonna throw in A man's castle is his serenity. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right now it's five hundred dollars. There's also a bunch more stuff in here. There's a couple of uh, sides from Castle. <laughs> Some DVDs. This is the, when they, when they, right before the air Castle, they give the cast the DVD of the show so we can watch it before you guys do. Yeah, these are old ones though. <laughs> That's five hundred dollars going once. Five fifty. Six hundred dollars. $600 going once, going twice, sold. Nice. I'll really take that. What's another question? We have a question right at the back there. You gentlemen, right, sir? You, sir. Sorry about that. Thank no. you for... Don't wrinkle that. It's a great shirt. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, Do you need some help? If you're asked you're good? to be in a okay. Star Wars movie... You're good? Oh, sorry, what? You're asked... <laughs> If you're asked to be in a Star Wars movie, which character would you want to be or what kind of character would you want to be? And I also challenge you to a duel in a video game of your choice. Um, I'd like to be a bad guy. I'd like to be a bad guy. I'd like to be a bad guy and I'd like to be killed in a Star Wars movie. I'd like to be a robot. I would like to be a Jedi. I'll take anything. <laughs> I think if I had to take you on in a video game, it would either be um, Call of Duty, Xbox, or, or Halo, Xbox. Here's the problem, about se seven years ago, I was like playing Halo a lot and I was getting really good and I was playing, I peaked. Doesn't matter how much I play now, I'm just the worst. It's not even the worst. I'm all, I'm all right. But uh, I don't know, these old thumbs. <laughs> so perhaps Halo 5 Guardians. I'll see you there. Here's a little something I got for you guys. I got a pop figure here. I'm gonna throw in one more Serenity poster signed by Nathan, Joss, Alan, and Adam. Five dollars. 50? 50? 200 right here, 300, 400, 500 dollars, 550 dollars. You guys, you know what I'm going to throw in? I have a stack of tattoos of Alan Tudyk's face. I had these printed up for Con Man. This says Spectrum along the bottom. It's his character from Con Man's series Spectrum. Uh, when I had them all printed up, I I pasted one on my butt. And I took a close-up picture of it, and I said, hey, we got the tattoos, and he was really excited. Then I showed him the blown-out portion. <laughs> and like, me go. I'm gonna throw that in. I'm at 500 right now. 550? 600. $600. I'm gonna throw in, oh. So Entertainment Weekly asked me to write something about the final episode of Walking Dead, because I'm a huge fan, so I wrote a love letter. And they sent me a great box of swag. Rest assured, I kept all the best stuff but I signed this one. I'm not in the show, but... <sighs> but I feel tight with those guys. And I'm at how much? I'm at 600 right now. You know what else I'm gonna throw in? <laughs> Put your head to sleep on this at night, guys. Check this out. It's got little shuttles. And they slip into the side. I signed the top of it. I took a little nap on it. I'm at 650? 
Seven hundred dollars. Seven fifty. Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars going once. Eight fifty. Nice job. Nice job. You know what else I'm gonna throw in? I'm gonna throw in two issues of Leaves on the Wind, signed by me. And my Monsters University journal. <laughs> I'm at 850. 850 going once. 850 going twice. Wow. $900. $900 going once. 950. <laughs> uh, I know, right? 975. Going once, going twice, sold. Well done, you guys. Who's got a question? This gentleman right here. Hey, Nathan. I'm a huge fan of Castle, and I'm just, I love the moments in the show where best case ever, where you, your character nerds out. What's your favorite, like, nerd out case from Castle? Like, mine's one of, like, the Ninja episode is one of my favorites, or the time travel. I was wondering what one you like. Uh, I got to do two episodes with Jessica Beals. Come on. Uh, I made sure nobody was going to do any flash dance references. No, no. She can cut you like a knife. I was like, nobody do that. Let's everybody be cool. And then I was like, always like not being cool. Uh, I, I, I nerd out on our guest stars. Jason Begay. Does anybody know who Jason Begay is? Monkey Shines. Remember, remember back when you had to go to the VHS store and there was like a lineup of VHSs? And there was a, on the cover of this one movie, there was one of those symbol monkeys that looked crazy little toy monkey like that. And it was a, it was a story about a guy who I mean, has an accent, becomes a quadriplegic, and his buddy helps him with this little monkey that's gonna help him out. And the monkey's got like, like super smart and starts killing people. It's a horror movie. Jason Begay, I love that movie. He came to guest on Castle and he told me that monkey's name was Ella and she was very willful. And <laughs> she'd you know, you have to do like a little trick. Say, Ella, grape. And Ella's supposed to feed him a grape. Ella, grape. So he's great and puts it in his mouth. He goes, he goes, great, guys, roll the cameras, roll the cameras, it's doing good. Ella, grape. Puts another grape in his mouth. The cameras are all rolling. He goes, Ella, grape. And she goes, he goes, she just gave him a look. <laughs> he goes, uh oh. <laughs> she grabs a turd and puts it in his mouth. <laughs> he's like tied to a bed. <laughs> oh, Jason. Yeah, I nerd it out. I nerd out all the time. Um, I got something for you guys. In this bag, I have a crap ton of con man tattoos. I have a t-shirt. Yeah, this one I actually wore for uh, Halloween. Remember my Captain Canada costume from Halloween? I took Captain America shield, I made it a Captain Canada shield, like, kind of like the World War II version of Captain America, but Canadian. I have some fan art. This is actually a really beautiful piece. It's a piece of wood, burnt in. It's a nice little message on the back. But I signed the front. You can also use this as a, like, what do, you, what do you call those things? Like a doily you can put your hot pots on? A trivet. I have sides from Castle. When I have a, a day of work, I go, I can't say it if it's not an orange. And the game is on. It's a challenge. These are the clues. Oh, I remember that episode. Oh, I'm not letting go of these. No, I will. Oh yeah, oh good. Someone wanted us to believe it was Taylor. Okay, this is good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give these. And I'm gonna give you, oh my God, there's so many tattoos in here. Oh, I once met Red Skelton. Right? And he, he was a big fan of the Canadian National Anthem, so he gave me a cassette. He mailed it to me. He, we, we used to be pen pals for a little while. He mailed it to me. Uh, it's his rendition and what, what the Canadian National Anthem means to him. I was like, what an odd guy, what a neat fella. All right, I'm gonna throw that in and I'm gonna throw in my bungee shirt, I'm gonna sign that. Oh. This is Camp Half-Blood. Yeah, from Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters. I'm gonna sign this up. Who's got five bucks? One hundred dollars. 
You know what else I'm going to throw in? (laughs) I'm going to throw in, uh, if you buy this, uh, come up on stage and take a selfie with me. $200? $300? I hope you don't mind in the selfie if I'm all sweaty. $350? Five hundred dollars. That's that's two more surgeries. I have a pair of socks in here. They're Canadian socks. It's from the Firefly, the online game, Big Damn Heroes. I'm gonna sign this. I'm right now at five hundred dollars. Five hundred going once. And a selfie. How much? 550. 600. Well done. 600 going once, going twice. Sold for $600. Who was that? Come up here right now. Come up here right now. Who's got the next question? This young lady here in the glasses who shot her hand just shot up. Come on up here, buddy. I hope it's an iPhone. Is it an iPhone? Thank God. I'm really good at these. Ready? And I'm interviewing you. What? <laughs> We're gonna, you guys, be cool. Smile. Thank you, Thank you brother. Uh, hi, Nathan. My name is Cecilia. Um, I want to say, first of all, congratulations on uh, season eight of Castle. Castle? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I wanted to know how you keep it fresh after seven and a half, seven years of doing, playing the same character? Uh, Bob Woods. He's, he, was, uh, he played my uncle Bo Buchanan on One Life to Live. He said, thank you, I'm good. He said, uh, he called it fresh minting. He said, you're going to say every line uh, like 50 times. Your job is to say it the first time, like it's the first time you said it every time you say it. And, uh, and he said that that was very early on in my career, my first big gig. So that's my job. Um, I always find it weird talking about acting and process and because I, I work with so many people who are so much more talented than I am, so it feels a little weird. It helps me to break it down into something like fresh menting. <laughs> I'm gonna fresh ment that. Give me another take, I'm gonna fresh ment it. Um, another trick is, uh, <laughs> it's a trick. Pretend it just came to you. Oh, well, <laughs> that's all it takes. Uh, John Huertas does it like this. <laughs> just his eyes, that's all he does. That's all he does. And it seems like he's thinking about something. Usually he's just kind of like, trying to remember his line. <laughs> all right, I have something for you guys. Uh, just, uh, this just in, if there's any uh, Star Wars fans out there, I have a Boba Fett grilling set. <laughs> I have... I want this. Oh, I have to pull out the thing to make the battery work. This is a uh, Chewbacca bottle opener that goes every time you open it. (laughs) And I'm gonna throw in the Darth Vader lightsaber pizza cutter. (laughs) We're gonna Star Wars out your kitchen, guys. I'm also gonna throw in An autographed photo with me with two of the guys from uh, Power Rangers and some random guy dressed as a Power Ranger. (laughs) He looks pretty doped out, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, Five dollars? Fifty dollars. I'm gonna throw in this Pixar animation, one more journal, leather bound, really pretty. One hundred dollars. One fifty? $200? $200? I'm going to sign your Boba Fett. Thank you. What were we at? $250? $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250. $250.
$250. You know what else I'm going to throw in? I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's Nerd Food Co That's a Nerd Food t-shirt. <laughs> Why am I giving this away? Nerd Food. Oh my God, what have you got? Shekinah, ladies and gentlemen, Shekinah. I'm going to throw in the Nerd Food. Oh, this is, this is from my home country. CBC. That's our broadcasting company. Canadian Broadcasting Company, CBC Radio Canada. I'm going to throw that in there. What are we at right now? We're at 250? 250 going once? Going twice and sold. Nice job, guys. It's an entire surgery right there. There we go. Thank you very much. Another question. Please, in the red shirt right here. There's a microphone right behind you. The Con Man uh, Indiegogo campaign had like amazing production values. How long did it take you and Alan and PJ to put that together once you finally decided to stop going to the networks and try to, to uh, crowdfund it? Do you mean the actual production of all the videos we did? Yeah, the videos, there were, I just never saw any other Indiegogo campaign where when the stretch goals were met, there were you know, those clips and everything that, that came up right away. That... Alan pre-wrote that whole Shabil, uh, we finessed it on the day. We filmed everything in one day. We had everything ready in one day. We had an idea that we could make three episodes. We thought we could, we, we wanted to raise a little over $400,000. We thought we could do that. We, we really said, I, I believe we could, that can happen. It could probably happen. Uh, we had no idea the entire thing would happen, but we wanted to be ready. And if it happened, uh, we didn't want to have to go back and start filming stuff to say thank you and be late and stuff. We wanted, to, we wanted it to be tight. and We wanted it to look like we were ready. And uh, that's all Alan and that's all PJ Harzma. Um, I just kind of rushed in and said, what do I do? Where do I stand? What do I say? Done. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Alan's a very clever guy and he can write things like that. And then he can, uh, he, that thing was all written. He, he, had, he had a monologue there. It was all written and, he, and it came out like it was the first time. But it's also, he freshmented it. <laughs> but it's also because he was uh, actually talking from his heart about something he's wanted to do for some time. Uh, but yeah, we did that all in one day. It was a piece of cake against a green screen. It was good. Remember the soccer outfit? I put on the soccer outfit, killing those shorts. <laughs> Another question? Right there in the back, the young lady right there. Hi. Um, so since we're obviously all huge fans of you and Joss Whedon and the people you've worked with, and also very excited for Con Man to come out, I wanted to give you a choice of questions. I was wondering if you could share a story um, of yours that went directly into Con Man, or uh, if you could share a story from some of your experiences at Josh Whedon's uh, Shakespeare parties. OK, so. Uh... When I arrived on set for Con Man, uh, something that struck me right away was Alan knew everybody's first name off by heart. When we, when it was the second day of filming, maybe the first day of filming, second day. He knew everybody's name off by heart, number one. That was amazing. That's something I endeavor to do. It takes me weeks. He knew everybody's name off by heart, first day. Amazing. Um, Shakespeare reads, I remember doing a scene in Joss Whedon's backyard, this lovely kind of garden area. It looks like a fairy tale land back there with blossoms and there was mimosas and brunch over here and just sweet smells of flowers and food. It was great and everybody's sitting on the grass and chilling and having a great time. And I turned and I was doing a scene with Alexis Denisov and, <laughs> and I'm going, wow, he's really good. And I was getting a little emotional and going, Dad, this is great. Why is he, why is he waiting so long? What's the pause? It's my line. <laughs> We're just reading. He's got the book right in front of me. And I, just, I'm, I was mesmerized. And I remember thinking, I'd seen Shakespeare a number of times. I'd seen videos when I went to high school. I saw they made us watch the videos. Nothing clicked for me. When I was watching Alexis, it clicked. I understood every word. I got it. I, I said, oh, 
that's what it means. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a moment for me. Uh, really talented guy. I, I don't know if you've uh, seen Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. Amazing. That guy, there was a scene where he's got a monologue and he's running up and down the stairs in the back of Joss's house. Running up and down those stairs, spouting Shakespeare. If you make one mistake, it's over. You gotta start all over again. Plus, there's a couple of guys running up and down the stairs with you. One of them's going backwards, holding a camera on a steady cam gig. It was craziness. <sighs> Good times. You know what I got feet? I have my last Serenity poster, signed by Nathan, Alan, Adam, and Joss. Joss, that's a tough one to get. I'm gonna throw in an R2-D2 mug. It blurps. It blurps when you, uh, when you lift it. I'm also gonna throw in another Boba Fett set for barbecues and these little plush toys from Star Wars. Who's got five bucks? One hundred dollars. One fifty. Two hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. I'm gonna throw in <laughs> me trying to bite John DiMaggio's face. He's the voice of Bender the Robot. He's, he also did. He was kind enough to do my outgoing message on my machine. So now Bender the Robot answers my phone. I'm also gonna throw in another Owen Danoff CD, autographed, by the way, by Owen Danoff. What are we at right now? Four, Four already? $500? $550? I'm also gonna throw in a crap ton of con man tattoos of my face. And this, this is a hammock. That's a hammock. It's in your pocket, and you pull it out, and you string it up between two trees, and you're taking a nap. I'm gonna throw that in. I'm gonna sign it. I'm gonna throw that in. We're at 550. 600. 650. 650 going once. 650 going how much? Well done, $700, $700 going once, going twice, 725. You know what else I want to throw in? Some tissues. Ah, I do, uh, I do some charity work in Malawi through a, a company, a, a nonprofit called Kusawera. We sent them uh, for activities a bunch of little leather straps, little leather things. It's a bracelet. I used to make these in high school. I designed this thing in, in high school. I said, hey, you guys could do this. And got some leather punch tools, and one of them made me a Nathan bracelet to say thank you. I'm going to throw that in there. What, how much are we at right now? A flux capacitor. <laughs> it lights up. I'm gonna throw that in there. What, what's our, what, what are we at right now? We're at 725. That's 720, 750, 750, $800? $800 going once, $850. Do I hear 875? 850 going once, going twice, sold. Another question. Right at the back, right on, right on the edge. Right on the edge on the back. I know you. Firstly, I will give $100 if you remember my name. Uh, <laughs> you played this on me last time, and I don't remember that last time. And you went, I can't believe you don't remember my name. I meet a lot of people, lady. <laughs> um, no, that was just a joke anyway. Um, you've mentioned Clark Gregg several times. Yeah. I'm wondering when we will find Castle and Beckett show up at a crime scene in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Or how about an episode of Castle where like this uh, in indeterminate kind of government agency sweeps in and says, you don't have any jurisdiction here. We're going to take over. Um, it's happened once or twice where we're out uh, in Los Angeles somewhere downtown filming. And uh, I noticed that there's other 
camera trucks and other equipment over there, and I'll say, hey guys, what are you guys filming over there? And they'll go, oh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Take five, everyone. <laughs> and I go strutting over, and I'll watch Ming-Na beat the crap out of somebody. I'll watch Clark Gregg shooting at a car. And it's a lot of fun. You get to see each other out there. It's, it's kind of neat. It's kind of like, yeah, you're out there in the trenches, and everybody's having a good time fighting the Los Angeles heat. I'd love to do that, kind of crossovers and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Here's something I have for you guys. <laughs> I have for you, how much time do we have? We got 20 minutes, great. Oh, I have a lot of con man tattoos. <laughs> and an issue of Buffy the Vampire Slayer comic book. An issue of Captain Canuck kind of a badass looking superhero. However, his powers are politeness, <laughs> forgiveness, and smelling like maple syrup. <laughs> and he can give you like a sodium heart attack with all the bacon. I don't know what's in here. Those can't be? Nice. Say it, say it into the microphone. These are exclusive and they can't be found anymore. She's kind of shy. <laughs> She's got some exclusive... Oh my God, that's a great one. I want that one. Oh yeah. Oh, this is my badge from Comic-Con. <laughs> my badge. This is going to get you into some trouble. <laughs> I signed that. I have this, I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you poster. The, as before mentioned, two issues of the comic books. And, <laughs> oh my God, this is so beautiful. It's a Christmas ornament with uh, Spock dying in the dilithium crystal chamber. You ruined Christmas. <laughs> I have been and always will be your friend. Of all the souls I've encountered in the world, his was the most human. <laughs> right? Absol <laughs> Absolutely fitting that uh, we're here today because the needs of the many do outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Uh, I got a t-shirt here that's going to be, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oops, oh, yeah. Guys, it gets better when you put on the hood. It's a little mask in the hood. I have worn this on more than one occasion. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to sign it. Who's gonna give me five dollars for this stuff? 250. 300. 350. 400 dollars. I got a couple more DVDs of Castle in here, some more of my sides from Castle. I think I signed those already. Wanted did a live Malcolm Reynolds poster, a little bit wrinkled. <laughs> By me. <laughs> We're at 450. Lots and lots of tattoos you can share with your friends or just hold them over them and make them jealous. Also, a hammock in a bag. <laughs> is this a hammock or is this a bag? One of them. We're at 400? We're at 400? <laughs> it can't be seen. They'll have to trust you. It's signed. I have 400. Go $500. Nothing else? 500? How much? 550. 500. 650. $600. 650. I guess let's go with 650 here. 650 here. How much? That's what I thought you said, $700. Here's what I'm gonna throw in, you guys. 
It is a Han Solo in carbonite tech holder. Oh, I guess you balance your phone on that. That's where you put your phone at night. $750. $750 right over here. That's three surgeries. I'm also going to throw in <laughs> the Hulk versus Ultron. <laughs> Christmas ornament. Hulk smash Christmas. <laughs> what did we have? We, we, 700? 750? Where were we? 750 where? Here? 750 right here. 750 going once, going twice, sold. Well, there's a lot of extra stuff in there too. Nice, thank you very much. Who's got a question? Right here, because we, we all skipped you by accident. Yes, you in the lovely glasses, yes please. Yeah, we missed you last time. So until Castle, most of your shows only had one or two seasons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. No, no. So I know that was, you've mentioned that that was kind of frustrating and that Castle was really a, a great thing for you. What did you do to help motivate you through the hard times to keep going and doing what you're doing? Uh. That's, that's an excellent question, it's a good question. Here's the thing I, I keep trying to remember. What hard times? What hard times? I'm living my dream. At, at, the, at the most, it's, uh, it's draining. Sometimes I just, I just don't get enough sleep. Uh, I can be cranky, I can, have, I can have a temper, I can do those things. Um, I'm really grateful. I always have to remember, what would I rather be doing? What would I rather be doing? Which is what I say to other people when I get them complaining. What would you rather be doing? Where would you rather be today? than here. And this is, I always remind myself, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to be doing. Um, I'm not suited to anything else. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I really hope it doesn't dry up for me because I don't know, I'll be like on a side, like the exit of the freeway with a sign that says, we'll food for work with arrows, switching them like around like that, just trying to make sure. I, I don't know what else I would do. Um, My worst day is a great day, and I have to remember that. And I think that's true in a lot of, uh, when we think about the luxuries we have, and, and, and I start thinking about people who don't have clean water to drink, I try not to complain. I do, constantly, <laughs> but I try not to. Another question, please sir, you. But the selfie, we took the selfie, it was great. Would you rather play uh, Green Lantern in a Marvel or in a DC movie, or would you rather play in a Joss Whedon uh, Marvel movie? Well, that's a bit of a no-brainer, right? I'd, I'll do Joss in a heartbeat. Uh, that would. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, I, when I first moved out to Los Angeles, people would say to me, oh, well, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I, I always, kind of like it was a dirty thing. Like people would get jobs because they know somebody. And now that I've actually worked for a while, I, I tend to work with the same people over and over again. And now I know that's not a bad thing. It's actually a great thing. You find someone you enjoy, uh, that you like to work with, that you know what to expect, and you, you're gonna have a great time. You know you're gonna have a great time. You know you're gonna make something great. Why not work with the people you know? Why not work with your friends? Why not uh, gather your friends unto you and then make something fantastic? Con man, Dr. Horrible. Yeah, good stuff like that. We really enjoy it. Much ado, right? I see a pattern. Another question. Are you in the back, young lady? Yes, you, with the diddly diddly diddly. Um, last year, you talked about um, perhaps doing a castle with Alan Tudyk as yeah. sort of an alternate. Yeah. Where yeah. is that? Is that going to happen? Oh, I sure hope so. I keep post. I keep. I keep pitching this episode of, of Castle where um, uh, Castle and Beckett are, you know, on a case, and there's this other team of a cop, detective, and a writer <laughs> doing the same thing they're doing, but like like cheaply. And Alan's the author, and he's really pompous, and he's English. And he's just, 
um, looking down at Castle all the time. And it's like, really? Because you're doing my thing and you're looking down on me? Um, and then, the, like, when the, everything kind of goes down and the people are firing and shooting because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, Alan's like, I can't, I'm not, I'm from Des Moines, Iowa! <laughs> I shouldn't even be here! Um, <laughs> which I think would be great. Uh, but I'll, I'll take Alan doing anything. Alan's really great at creepy, by the way. Did you know this? Alan's great at creepy. Have you seen Dollhouse? Yeah. Creepy. Um, has anyone seen Premature? Okay, God, go see it. Please go see it. It's an odd thing. It's kind of like Groundhog Day with this kid who every time he... Uh, prematurely... You know, he resets this day. So Alan plays this character there of, 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 a, of a counselor who is, uh, I just, I think it's, I never think it's interesting to see someone uh, cry really hard on TV. I always think it's really interesting to see someone trying not to cry, trying to contain it. And Alan's character can't, con tries desperately, but can't contain the sadness over the death of his wife. And everything that you say reminds him of it. And it's just exquisite to watch, exquisite. Here's what I have for you guys. A broken Christmas ornament. <laughs> this one is uh, ooh, a Y-wing starfighter from Star Wars. Oh, we forgot to, this was for the last guy. That was uh, Hulk's Mass Christmas, remember that? We have Beetlejuice. We have Gizmo. We have a Batman. I am Christmas. <laughs> and where's, do I have any more bags left? I've got nothing left from, from my stuff, so this is all the, I'm gonna go, ooh, it's a Han and Leia. Right, five bucks. I'm gonna throw in it. <laughs> I wanna keep it. It's a uh, Princess Leia bottle opener. What does she say when you crack a, when you crack a brew? You're my only hope. And those things right there, five bucks. Five bucks. Fifty dollars. How much? Fifty? Seventy-five? One hundred dollars? Two hundred dollars going once? Two fifty. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars going once? Damn it. Three how much? I have the picture. Where is that? Perfect. I'm going to throw in, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to sign one and give it to you. And I'm going to, this is great. How much are we at right now? We're at 350. <laughs> Four. <laughs> so that's that for that young lady. I'm going to throw in this beautiful piece. They really nailed Adam. Beautiful piece of fan art signed up there. We're at 450 right now, throwing this in with all the Christmas ornaments. 450 going once. Five. Sorry. Five. 550. How much? 550 going once, going twice. Sold. We got a couple more minutes, guys. Another question. You, sir. Hi. Hi. Um, first, I, I just want to thank you uh, for your performance as Captain Hammer. I used uh, one of your songs for an audition piece, and I, I got the, the part. And, I expect uh, a commission. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, uh, and there's a, there's a really great running joke on Castle um, that started in the pilot with Castle uh, just singing action music, and then it ended up being the score for the fight scene just moments later. And it's been in a lot of episodes just... There's one episode where a guy's just playing it on a piano, and I think Castle goes, oh, hey, good job. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the uh, musical sting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, is that going to come back, or would you, would you bring it back? That running joke? Anytime I can get a running joke into an episode, I do it. Um, uh, <laughs> if we had our way, <laughs> if we had our way, Castle would be a laugh riot. Um, I think as it is, we've been considered a drama for so very, very long, but we have, uh, we have new leadership right now who, uh, they think there's very dramatic moments in Castle. They think they hit some very heavy stuff. But 
on the whole, uh, they believe Castle is, at its heart, a comedy. And I agree. I think it's one of the things that makes it a great show is that it doesn't take itself terribly seriously and that it is far lighter-hearted fare. And I think uh, a little more like that, right? A little more like Moonlighting. Um, and I think that's why I think a lot of families are into it. How many people watch Castle with their family? Exactly. Thank and by the way, thank you. Um, yeah, if we, <laughs> if we were allowed to run rampant with the jokes and the gags, uh, my God, we would never get anything done, number one. Number two, uh, it'd be a heck of a lot funnier. I'm going to give you guys something here. This is a uh, lot. So we got Luke, C-3PO, Obi, and a Jawa, who is exactly the same size as everybody else. <laughs> oh, my God. My brother's going to want this, but I'm selling it. It's an Iron Man Christmas ornament. That would look really good on my tree. I'm not going to lie to you. Yoda's Destiny Decider. Ask and press. Is this panel going well? <laughs> on. Is this panel going well? You get that. <laughs> Darth Vader in a Christmas sweater. <laughs> I love this top. Why don't I have it? Uh, Yoda bottle opener. What does he say when you crack a, crack a brew? There is no try. Only drink. All right. And then Darth Vader, who just breathes heavy into your glass. $5. One hundred dollars. I'm gonna throw in some con man mag. <laughs> I went through, fell down. <laughs> con man magnets, a piece of my sides from Castle, where I didn't actually say anything. These are my favorite days. And uh, one con man tattoo. <laughs> I have one hundred dollars. I'm gonna throw in this napkin and this red piece of plastic <laughs> signed. $200. I love you. $200, $210. I'm throwing in this plastic bag. What? I'm throwing in I, uh, a couple years ago, had the opportunity to meet William Shatner, and then I was asked to do this. Oh. We've traveled back in time. Did Zach sign? Zach signed his. Wesley, as you wish. I'm gonna throw that in there. We're at $200, 250, 275, 300. I got 300 over here, right here. How much? 345. 25? 25. 325. Who's got 345? 345. Who's got 346? 345. 350. Back to rounded numbers. 350. Going once. 375. 400. 400 dollars. 425. 425. $425. $500. $500. I'm gonna start signing these Marvel things that I have no right to be signing. <laughs> when you put it on eBay, just say, weird, right? But hey. <laughs> How much are we at? Five? $500? 500. Going once for 500, going twice, $500 sold. <laughs> Don't forget this. Thank you. We got time for another question, maybe two. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go way to the back, way to the back of these people I don't see. Yeah, it's the person that's waving to the person next to them person. How we do, are we do, there we go, you're good, you're good, good. Hello. 
Hello. I would like to know if you could say hi to my grandma. Hi, grandma. Her name is Sue. Hi, grandma Sue. And I was wondering if you could tell me what have you learned about yourself through the characters you played throughout your career? I love working. <laughs> I really love working. Um, I love telling stories. Um, uh, I made a lot of mistakes in my career, especially right at the beginning. Uh, handy to be on a soap opera because you can make a lot of mistakes on a lot of shows and it's only been six weeks. <laughs> so a very condensed experience. Uh, I learned uh, to, part of my job is putting myself out there uh, for, for everyone else's judgment and having to have a, a thick skin when they say, yeah, I didn't like it, or you're ugly. You'd be amazed, <laughs> or maybe you wouldn't, how much I get that kind of stuff. Um, having a thicker skin, I, I, I've learned that. Um, uh, I have always wanted, in the beginning, I think this was a terrible mistake to make, I always wanted to make myself look cool. I always wanted to have the best character. I always wanted to be, have no faults. And uh, I learned that that's just a really crappy way to go. And it's self-serving. And if you're serving yourself, you're not serving the show, you're not serving the scene, you're not serving the story, you're not serving the other actors. It's, it, it does the opposite of what you want it to do. When you're trying to make yourself look good, it does the opposite. It makes you look bad. And I learned that. And it was a tough lesson. But it, when I understood that all you have to do is give everything away. How do I make this a great scene? How do I make it great for you? How do I make it great for the writers? How do I make it better for camera? It's a team effort. And when you start working like that, everybody's taking care of everybody else. You don't have to worry about looking good. Everyone else makes you look good. And it works, it works. It's, it's scary to have to let go of, I wanna serve myself. It's very scary. But when you do, it's a very safe place to be. Um, I, I, I learned that. I learned to be uh, less selfish. Thank you, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Another question? Thank you. This gentleman in the hat. Hi, um, in your career, what is the number one thing you want to be remembered for? Being right. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I'm right now, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing like a gravestone and it's big, it's kind of, and there's flowers all over and notes and stuff and people leave and it says, Nathan Fillion hitched his wagon to the right horses. <laughs> Think about it. I'm surrounded by incredibly talented people, a, a, a lot. I've been very, very fortunate in my career. Um, it's not like actors, uh, there's, I'm, I'm sure there's an upper echelon of a few that pick and choose what they want to do. That's not how it goes. When are you gonna do more horror? It's not my call. I get opportunities for jobs, I try out for them like everybody else and they hire me or they don't, mostly don't. And uh, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, uh, well first of all, you're, you're, you're gonna, you wanna do it because it, it speaks to you in some way. I, I want to do this for X, Y, Z reasons. If you're lucky, you're working for amazing people. James Gunn, Joss Whedon, uh, Andrew Marlowe. If you're lucky, you're doing fantastic projects. Slither, Firefly, Serenity, Much Ado. If you're lucky, you make great friends. Everyone I've worked with, wonderful people. I've had a great time. Um, like I said, where, where else would I rather be? right here with you guys. Another question? You, sir. This will be the last question. Okay, ooh, I have to make it a good one. Yeah. Uh, I saw uh, an interview that you did for Firefly Online uh, that was posted, and if, when, I mean, if, but when the game launches, pun intended, um, if it takes off because there's a lot of interest in people playing it, is the door open for you to come back in and do more voice work uh, to continue uh, to continue with Mal in the game? Anything I can get my hands on that will keep Firefly alive, I will do. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks. I mean, that's again, it's a it's a no brainer. It's it's one of those things like uh, like that whole. Uh, <laughs> I keep bringing it back to comment, like Alan does. In comment, Ray nearly hates Spectrum because it's the best thing he's ever done, and he just sees it as a as a curse. Whereas the reality of it is. Uh, we all see it as an incredible blessing. Every time I come to one of these conventions, every time I go out there, every time I meet people, I, it's, there's not less Firefly fans, there's more. I meet people all the time who say, I just finally watched it two weeks ago. Why did it get canceled? <laughs> they're right there. You remember when we were all, we've all been there. We all were at that spot. And there are people coming to that spot all the time and it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel like I did something right. Why would I ever, ever want that to die? That's fantastic. And I said this before, and I think it's true. It's not the saddest thing in the world um, that Firefly died. It would be the saddest thing in the world if it stayed dead. Thank you guys very much. I've had such a wonderful time. Thank you so much.